The most important concept in landscape drawing is overlap, and overlap is almost always illustrated by this little diagram here everybody does, which is that when you break these all apart, you have one complete rectangle and two incomplete rectangles, and when you put them close to each other, that creates the illusion that one's in front of the other. Now, what happens is that we basically assign these three overlaps to different things in, in landscape. We assign this to the foreground, this to the middle ground, and this to the background, right? So if we think of our foreground, middle ground, background on a landscape as sort of stacking up in layers, it's a little bit easier to uh, visualize how it's all going to work, right? So it's sort of like you're setting up a diorama or something like that. So, you know, you're going to have like your mountains back here, right? You're going to have trees and things like that here. You know, big groupings of trees. And then up here, you're going to have like small plants and grasses, right? Maybe some rocks or something like that. Okay. So in each of these three little layers, you wind up creating little planes. Now, when you stack them all up and begin to actually make a landscape out of them, that's when it gets really particularly interesting, right? You can take, you know, your horizon, and I would kind of place it relatively low to start with if you're just beginning, um, and then you can, you know, throw in things like, you know, you've got a bush here, some grasses. Maybe there's like flowers in the grasses and stuff like that. Or maybe there's even like a pathway that leads you back in space here that has grass alongside it, right? And goes back, right? Then behind it, you know, you can put in trees that begin to take you into the middle ground. They can be of various types and sizes. And then maybe these trees are on slight hills, right? Maybe there's hills of trees back here. And then as you get into the background, You then start to think about, well, okay, do I have mountains back here? Is it kind of craggy? Do I have multiple layers of mountains? And you can begin to develop a landscape that way. Okay? It's pretty simple. Um, but applying it has a lot of variety. And um, we're going to look at some artwork. So I went to the National Gallery and just kind of grabbed pictures of every landscape, um, uh, every relatively old landscape anyway, that I thought might be, uh, might be useful to look at. And so we can actually draw on top of these a little bit and highlight a little bit of what they're doing. Um, So that we can begin to make sense of it. So if we think of each one of these layers kind of in silhouette, right? Like not as in, uh, we're not drawing within the form, we just think of the contour, right? So if we think of that, then we have the basic idea here, right? That we have this tree silhouette here, right, that's kind of coming down. This branch kind of comes out, right? Then this is all part of the foreground, right? This is because this is all like what's in front. And if we're kind of careful with this, we can actually get a pretty realistic looking landscape just with these kind of basic silhouettes.
here it gets pretty complex because we're, you know, we actually see a lot of the middle ground through this tree here. We have to kind of come down and bring ourselves back here. So we go back into the foreground here, right? And I think sometimes it's important to like poke holes in it. So anyway, what we're going to do is do this here. Then we're going to grab our, our bucket and just fill it. Um, go back to our brush and I'm going to paint that out. So here we have one layer, which is the foreground, right? Um, then behind that, we have the middle ground. We'll switch colors here. So I would say, you know, you got basically this area is the middle ground. And there's actually overlap within the middle ground, right? Because this kind of goes behind everything. And then there's an odd transitionary period where we're going kind of from the middle ground to several layers of the background. It's up to you where, to, where that line goes. But you could also say that maybe this uh, belongs to the middle ground here so you could you could make that argument too okay so you could go in you could see about filling all this so you could say that's middle ground and then we could just pick like a different color and this could be for our background and there we go Boom. We're going to exclude the clouds just for simplicity's sake. Oh, wait, I drew over. Hang on. Do it like this. Okay, there we go. So basically we have a simplistic landscape kind of laid out for us in three basic layers. You know, from there, um, we subdivide in within those layers and add little objects and things that overlap each of that. Okay. I'm not going to save that, but we're going to look at some more stuff. Um, let's see. Here's a good one. And here we see exactly the same thing, right? We see a um, a foreground right here. We can probably include this in the foreground too. That might be more middle ground. Um, yeah, let's say let's assign that to middle ground like and make this more foreground. So here we have our foreground, right? And what you'll notice about the foreground is that it's also dark. Then when we get into the middle ground here, which I would say is probably, I don't know, I think we would just do it like this. This would be the middle ground. And then it has medium value. It's not, it's not um, very light and it's not very dark either. And your background basically goes here, right? And it's all very light values, right? For all practical purposes, we eliminate the sky because the sky is kind of this long plane, okay? Then here's another really obvious one, right? Dark, medium, light, foreground, middle ground, background. And what's neat about this is um, they have conveniently 
basically made a really easy foreground for you to identify because it's very almost very strictly foreground darks, right? Now sometimes you get areas like this which are definitively middle ground. Like see how small that church is right there. Right. So I would say like this whole area is a couple of planes of middle ground, right? And what they're doing is they're using a darker middle tone to transition, right? Um, and then here, this transitions again right here. You see this value differentiation between middle and background. And then beyond that, we have this big background right here, right? <coughs> and again, it goes dark, medium, light, front to back. Um, and we're looking at old paintings specifically because this is when they were kind of developing and teaching these techniques really clearly so everybody was using them, right? Again, this is a very simple one, you know, foreground composition like this, and of course with people right here silhouetted. Okay, and then your middle ground is basically where the action happens, and sort of the, they're looking at the ship, right? So this is kind of where the action is. And then everything else back here is all background, right? Okay, and that's all basically working on this concept of overlap, right? You know, you have that, and that last one, you have your canvas, you have your rocks, you have your figures, right, standing there. You have your building here. In your middle ground, you have your boat. Sitting on the water, right? You have all those beams and all the fabric that are here, right? Goes all the way across. And then in the background, you have some mountains and stuff and some rocks coming up some hills. And so you're overlapping the foreground, middle ground, and background. Okay, so overlap is, is your main concept. If you take, if you, if you basically worked overlap, you could do a lot with just thinking about that concept, right? Um, now, in case you think that that's something that only that's only for old paintings, I wanted to show you something newer. Um, so if you look at Craig Mullins, who does a lot of digital painting stuff, he kind of started digital painting for illustrators. Um, he was there from the beginning of Photoshop. You see the same thing. And again, he actually took a lot of this info from uh, these artists anyway. So this shadow kind of falls into the middle ground, cast from the foreground your actual foreground objects are over here, right? And he's painting this pretty loosely. So you get a foreground like this, okay? You get a very well-defined middle ground through here. Goes all the way off the page because it's so steep. And then you get this background back here, right? a very gigantic moon back here. You know, in all actuality, if this were an Earth moon, it would be like this big. But hey, you know, it's sci-fi fantasy illustration. Um, and then there's other people that use the same thing. Um, let's see, Raphael Lacoste uh, <coughs> used to do art direction for Assassin's Creed. So here, it's very clear again. You have a foreground, with like figures and camels and things in it, right? But it's still the foreground. He always include he always includes figures and stuff, because he is a concept designer, and and the way that. 
um, you get across the sense of scale and concept design just by including figures. Because you know, every figure is about five and a half, six feet tall. Okay, so here you have a foreground. And again, it's dark because that's the most common. And then in the middle ground, you're here going all the way up. And then you have this background back here, which is really low contrast and kind of hazy, like there's constant dust storms going on. All right. That's just one example. Um, there's other ones. This is more, this one's very obvious in the way that it goes back with the atmosphere. You know, you got your foreground tree element here, right? Another little foreground tree crapping in here. More here. You got the night here going on a hike. Pretty brutal hike and armor and no horse. But anyway, you got your tree here. So your foreground is basically layered up there. Then your middle ground is this area right here. Very logically laid out into the castle. Okay. Then your background is back here, right? Through more castles and so on. Okay, and then within it, you know, he's taking other other elements like this rocky outcropping that the castle is built on, and he's stacking that as an in-between layer. And then there's in-between layers of foliage and and so on, right? It's not just three layers; it's multiple layers, right? Okay, but you get the idea that really all you're doing is you're creating overlapping shapes and you know, you can always begin constructing a landscape very simply, creating a low horizon line, and then defining some shapes that you want. How you want these these basic shapes to interact and flow. Okay. And then you can populate them however you need to. Now the problem with landscape is if you pull this horizon very high, if you put a horizon up here, then you're looking at the ground, right? And when you're looking at the ground, that means you have to be better at perspective. Right? So if you put a if you put like a boulder over here, right? You have to kind of know where that boulder is gonna be on that on that ground plane. Um, and it just gets more complicated. So in the beginning, what you want to do is at this one third line, right, about 30% of the way up from the bottom, that's like the max height for your horizon line. Um, keep it, I mean, 40% is kind of pushing it, um, but you could do 40%. But keeping it low means you're just going to work on simple shapes. Um, and so I'll, uh, I'll show you how to do that. I'll open up a, a reference file and uh, and kind of talk through like tracing on the photo of what that might look like and then I'll actually you know of course do a separate thing where I actually like draw but um, here's a cool example you know this one's a very a very low horizon Let me zoom into it. No, I'll stay there. Okay. So we've got a very low horizon, right? Because it's right about here. It's a little tilted, but you know, it's well below the, it's like 15% up, well below our tolerance, right? Um, so here, horizon line. Okay. Then in our foreground, our foreground is kind of distant from us, right? So we have certain elements in the foreground. There's this like downed tree right here. Um, there's this pile of brush here. And this fence, right? Um, then, because we're not seeing very far in the distance, we have to pick a cutoff. So the cutoff for the middle ground, I would say, is like these trees here. 
So the middle ground kind of goes here. Because behind here, I would include this tree in the middle ground and not the foreground because it's just a little bit further away. And then in our background, we have multiple layers of background, but basically the overall background is like this, right? Okay, and then within the background, we have multiple shapes that we can work with. Like we can throw this building in here. Um, you know, in the middle ground, we have another building here with this grain silo, right? We have layers of trees that we can bring back and overlap within that area. The main thing to get across is we've got this foreground, middle ground, and background, right? And what you can see is we've got very little ground plane to deal with, so it doesn't take much work. But we have a, a lot of sky, so, you know, this is kind of cool because it's like a little bit of a storm front things happening and you get these little swirls in the clouds, right? Um, so with clouds, um, you can think of it like you're looking at a ceiling, um, especially when there's an obvious cloud ceiling like this. So I'm going to erase all that because it, you know, it's not very cloud specific. It's just sort of a motion there. So what I would say is, you know, we could draw our cloud shape here, right? And then what would be cool is we could give the cloud like a bottom here, right? And then we could draw like, you know, these swirls of clouds up here, right? And then there's another cloud here, kind of goes through. And here we see like the bottom of this cloud, coming like all the way across and billowing up above it and everything, right? And we get another cloud back here that we kind of see the bottom of. I know our clouds just kind of go back in space like that, right? We can clean that up and make it better. Sort of Im make improvements on the clouds. So here, say like that. this cloud kind of interrupting and overlapping that. So if we turn off the background, we're kind of left with this little sketch of shapes, right? You know, we'd want to, if we're going to actually draw this, we would need to be more specific, you know? Like we need to go in and say, all right, well, this is an oak tree and I'm just going to go in and really kind of nail down like the shape of this oak tree. Now the crazy thing about it is, you know, the light, because it's a storm, it's like, it's stormy, it's coming just basically straight down, right? So your shadows are gonna kinda go like that. Okay, so you see that? We're getting our, the shadow coming just basically straight down. You know, here, we take this little shape. This is kind of a bush here, right? And you can actually see it here where there's this shadow shape going across. We would want to come in and put value there. We just want to be simplified but specific about what's here. So we keep turning this off and kind of checking our work. We're getting more specific with it, right? So here we can see a bunch of trees kind of contributing to this little tree grouping.
And again, yeah, we've got our light coming from straight up above, so we're just gonna do that. Do that here too. What's happening here is we have to like, we have to kind of interpret what's going on. So as we go through, we can really get into it. See, we, you know, one of the tricks you can do here, if you're drawing line only, is you can bump up the, the heaviness of the line weight in the foreground. So it kind of pulls forward a little more. You use thinner lines in the background, right? So by the time you get to the background, you use like really fine lines. And in the background, like, You can use less detail for everything and and if I were actually drawing this I would move these objects a little bit because they're kind of not in a great a great spot for drawing. Um, but you can kind of see how this this would develop. And then if we were to go in and begin to do light, medium, dark in the foreground, middle ground, background, you know, we would want to say, um, basically just go dark to light. And so we go with a dark value and um, make our brush pretty big. And we'll say, you know, this is all foreground here. We have this thin strip of foreground, okay, and then behind that we'd have our middle ground, so we go right into the middle values, which we said was another kind of thin strip of ground, and this building I think was here too, right, yeah, with these trees here. I'm doing this digitally, yeah, but, you know, the concept is exactly the same. I'm doing this super loose, right? But this is what you do for more for your study rather than for your actual piece. And then for your background, you're going to come in. And the background would be light, right? It doesn't matter if there are dark values in there, like you add those later. But when you're doing your study, this is what you wind up, wind up doing. Okay? And then your sky, generally speaking, winds up being uh, a gradient. Um, so here, let's do, that'll work. And then, just like that. So your sky would wind up being like a gradient, something like that. Um, you know, and you would you would you would tweak it, right? Um, you could make the sky darker or lighter, right? You know, in a storm, you might do like kind of a darker sky, and then put little bits of light into it. But there you have the idea that you're combining a loose sketch of foreground, middle ground, background, and dark, medium, and light, and that's what's making everything working. Um, so those are the basic, the, the two, the two very, or two or three basic concepts, you know, and just to review, it's very simple. It's overlapping, 
foreground, middle ground, background, dark, medium, and light. 